Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Rosalio Turbiartes here with a new video for you. And now, class is now in session. For today, we will be exploring the solar reactors and GN drives as well as GN particles from the good old Gundam 00. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, just sit back, relax, grab a soda or water if that's your thing, cause you're in for a treat. Class is in session. The year was 2090 when Eolia Schember proposed the original concept for the original GN drives, or solar reactors. After discovering a particle with the capacity to transmit a person's consciousness as well as the means to infinitely create said particles using the semi-perpetual engine, the particles were aptly named GN particles. GN particles were typically found in green color, however, they were alternate variants. These were part of multiple revolutionary technologies proposed by the genius who was ahead of his generation. Additional attributes exhibited by the particles include communication disruption, as well as the inherent lightness that rendered mobile suits, utilizing GM particles lighter, and more maneuverable by disturbing particles to various storage containers known as GM frame condenser throughout the mobile suit frame. It is unknown how, but these frame condensers have the ability to allow communication between allied mobile suits. If you ask me, it was just a writer's way of getting around the communication disruption caused by the particles. But we must remember that GM particles do allow for conscious sharing. So perhaps that has something to do with it. But that's only a theory. In addition, GM particles also allow for flight without a need for a propulsion system. As observed and remarked by Billy Cathagirl and Graham Aker in 2307 during the debut of GN001 Gundam Exia. There were also multiple combat advantages to GM particles of one of which is generating a shield made entirely from GM particles known as GN field. GM fields are a dense local grouping of GM particles that are temperature plastic and even GM particles resistant. This does, however, depend on the intensity of the field, which is indicated by the brightness of the glow. There are cases of GM fields becoming overwhelmed by GM-based weapons, such as GM blades and beams. For many based weapons, an example can be found on GN001 Gundam Axia, a mobile suit designed for close quarter combat. The physical blade utilized by the Axia and GM blade has a GM particle coating making it sharper than most conventional blades, utilizing by a mobile suit. It was remarked by Neo Lock-On Stratos, Dylandy, that the GM blade, due to its coating, had the inherent ability to penetrate GM fields, primarily in the event that enemies of celestial being were able to utilize GM technologies. A famous example of this occurring was during the battle between Setsuna FCE utilizing GN001, Gundam Axia, and Alejandro Corner, utilizing GNMA-97 Alvator, a machine utilizing seven solar reactors. The final combat advantage was the ability to utilize GM particles for projectile beam weaponry, i.e. guns. Due to the temperature resistance of nature and GM particles, it was standard practice to coat all mobile suits utilizing GM drives with GM particles, therefore allowing the atmospheric green tree. In total, five solar reactors were produced in secret for exclusive use of his secret organization, Celestial Being. It is known what year they were developed, however, it can be speculated that it was during the early 23rd century, approximately 2220 AD, when all five units were completed. One of the core components of the GN drives which Schemberg was unaware of was the topological defect blanket, which allows for infinite particle regeneration. It should be remarked that mobile suits utilizing genuine GN drives had an extend operation time speculated to be infinite. TD blankets are the most secretive component to any solar reactor and can be only produced within the atmosphere of Jupiter. Whilst the blueprints were stored within portable data units, the Celestial Beings were central database. Vida, the blueprints for the TD blankets were being held exclusively by the lead engineer developing a solar reactor. For 200 years, this proved effective as no Celestial Being engineer or third party was able to effectively reverse engineer or recreate the solar reactors. That segues us to our next point of discussion, the creation of GN drives, tau units, or pseudo-solar reactors. As the name implies, these are not genuine solar reactors created by celestial beings. Unlike genuine solar reactors, 
These units lack the TD blanket and have multiple drawbacks and side effects. As well as producing red-orange particles as opposed to celestial beings' green particles. Unlike celestial beings' solar reactors that were produced in a limited quantity, pseudo-solar reactors were mass-produced. The first of which is that pseudo-solar reactors lack the ability to infinitely generate GN particles due to not having a TD blanket and requiring an electrical starting order to begin and continue particle generation. This results in mobile suits outfitted in pseudo-solar reactors having a limited operation time as mortars must be recharged between operations as it is non-self-efficient like genuine solar reactors. In addition to not having a limited operation time, pseudo-solar reactors overall have a lower particle output in comparison to the genuine units resulting in less effective operations. A side effect of early model pseudo-solar reactors is particle toxicity. It is important to note that in the hypothetical 24th century, these mobile suits are used, cellular generation is considered a standard medical practice. Allowing injured people to regenerate their lost limbs. Particles generated from early model pseudo-solar reactors, however, have a tendency to exhibit these medical practices. A famous incident of this occurring was during the Haverly family massacre when rogue pilot Nana Trinity opened fire on the celebrating family, killing most of the participants and leaving the family heir, Louise Haverly, without one of her arms. And yes, because this is an anime, she did get her revenge. Nana is dead. So stop raising your hands or I will fail you. And if you're mad about spoilers, well, I mean the show is 10 years old. 10 years old? Time is a son of a biscuit. Another notable use of pseudo-solar reactors was during the reign of the Autonomous Peacekeeping Force. The Alaz, pseudo-solar reactors were distributed near non-member nations of the Earth's Fear Federation as means of disrupting economic activities. As remarked by Lyle Locke on Stratos Dylandy, due to GM particles naturally disrupting electronic communications, Dylandy also remarked that it had the unintentional side effect of hiding the Catheron rebel base from the Allahs. Though rarely utilized, celestial beings did have a temporary alternative to GN drives known as GN condenser drives. Unlike traditional GN drives, GN condenser drives did not generate particles, but were instead a housing unit for GN particles, allowing GN mobile suits to be activated without its solar reactor, albeit with a limited operation time, comparable to that of pseudo-solar reactors. Okay class, let's take a small break to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorials on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to make videos like this one? Do you want to write scripts and edit audios? Skillshare has got you covered, and with our link you can have a 14 free day trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free! Link in the description below. Now moving back to the genuine GN drives. There are a few aspects that still must be discussed. One of which is the two secrets that Schamberg left within the black boxes of the original GN drives. These were the Transam system and the designs for a twin drive system. Beginning with the Transam system, when activated, which is done by shouting Transam, it is anime after all. A GN drive will begin to expel all of its reserved particles and increase the overall particle output. Doing so will result in the mobile suit operating at three times its standard effectiveness, increasing speed, maneuverability, and damage output range weapons. An active transam can be identified by the mobile suit glowing pink and expelling pink particles as opposed to green, though they remain unchanged. There is, however, a huge drawback to a pilot using the Transam system. Once the reserve particles have been depleted, particle generation will be split between refueling the reserves as well as powering the mobile suit, resulting in lower effectiveness as low as 33% and experimental recreation was implemented to certain pseudo-solar reactors. And, by the time it has reached the time limit, the reactor will be irreparably damaged preventing particle generation, resulting in the mobile suit using the remaining reserves, of which there is likely none. It will promptly explode. 
The feature was later introduced into a pseudo solar reactors, but it is unknown of the issue rectified. There was also a resulting phenomenon from the use of Transam, specifically its burst variant. Due to a special state the particles entered, it was speculated that certain humans that came into contact with Transam and GM particles would undergo a form of evolution known as innovation, becoming what's known as an innovator. Becoming an innovator allows the use of quantum brainwaves, granting telepathic communication, having increased spatial awareness. Interfacing with specially designed machines and increased accurate data process, apparently they also live twice as long. Ian Vashti, engineer for celestial being, theorized that innovators don't actually need to come into contact with GM particles when undergoing innovation. Fearing that without anyone's knowledge, other humans may undergo innovation. The first recorded innovator was Setsuna FCA. It has been noted that by 2364 AD, 40% of the human population had undergone innovation. The twin drive system was an experimental concept to combine the output of two solar reactors for a single mobile suit. Doing so will result in the output being squared. As opposed to doubled, for some reason, the twin drive system will be officially trialed and then implemented into the GN0000 Gundam. Due to the system being theoretical, however, there were multiple stability issues. For one, the drives used had to be in a near-perfect sync with one another. One of the steps to achieve this was using correct combination of two original GN drives. Those have been drives 1 and 2, each utilized by GN000 Gundam and GN001 Gundam Exia, respectively, as well as a support unit that will increase sync. This unit will come to be known as O Riser, and when combined with the 00 Gundam, it will become the GN0000 GNR010 00 Riser. Perfect sync between the two drives would allow for increased output, and when utilizing transams, will allow for burst mode allowing the mobile suit to quantum teleportation within the radius release GM particles as well as the ability to temporarily link the consciousness of individuals within vicinity. The idea behind this technique was to stop fighting and reach understanding between individuals. An ideal dream by Eodia Schamberg. Although briefly used, there was also a second mobile suit to utilize a twin drive before construction of GNT 0000 quantity, also known as the 00 Quanta. This second suit was the CB 0000 GC Reborns Gundam. Unlike the 00 Razor, the Reborns did not require a support unit for synchronization, likely due to the fact that pseudo solar reactors utilized were mass produced units or were designed with the Reborn's twin drive system in mind. It was also stated that the Reborn's Gundam had a variant Transam. However, due to the mobile suit utilizing pseudo solar reactors, it will be speculated that using the system would terminate the machine after usage. Approximately 7 years after the appearance of Celestial Being, Celestial Being engineers finally cracked the secrets of the TD blankets and developed a brand new solar reactors to replace the two that were destroyed during the fight between Raymond's Almark and Setsuna FCE. Unlike Celestial Bean's previous solar reactors, these were designed specifically around the twin drive system and could achieve perfect synchronization without the need of support units. These solar reactors were also used as part of the new quantum system, which was in essence an upgrade version of Transam Burst. Linking the consciousness of nearby individuals and teleporting to anywhere within the known universe. It should also be noticed that sometime after the ELS conflict and dialogue, the Earth Sphere Federation supposedly learned the secret of TD blankets either of their own accord or by Celestial Being finally revealing the secret due to the fact that in 2364 AD, GNW-100A Sakibur's GN drives were emitting green light particles much like Celestial Being mobile suits. Now class, I'm sure you've gotten a lot from today's lecture, so I'll let you go. But first, thank you all for indulging yourselves of all of this information thus far. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, we the Celestials have got you covered. 
Our We The Slash is My Hero Academia and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, then I'd like to extend an invitation to join our team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for new members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you for watching and have a great day!